Hi everyone, I'm Gaurav Dhillon, founder and CEO of SnapLogic, and I'm pleased to be with you on uh, our virtual keynote for Big Data London. Uh, the topic of my keynote is around modern data platforms. What is a modern data platform anyhow these days? We have so many different definitions and so much has evolved. And uh, what I want to do is I want to share some experiences from the field, from actually building lakes, warehouses, and marts, and share with you our point of view on this topic. Well, so, so this is indeed the topic of the talk. And uh, now let me jump into some vantage points that uh, I feel I have the privilege to share. So, you know, SnapLogic is a integration company. We connect the dots for enterprises across the globe. We have hundreds of clients in every different vertical industry from airlines through banking, pharmaceuticals, et cetera, et cetera. And as a result, I have the privilege of having some unique information about the kind of challenges people are facing and the kind of things they're trying to do. Uh, also, by way of background, I've been in the data business for decades. You know, prior to this, I built Informatica as a co-founder and chief executive for 12 plus years, produced uh, uh, a public company that uh, did a really good job of ETL. And so I've been in this business, been around the business of connecting the dots for a long, long time. And I thought it'd be fun to share some perspectives. Um, so what people want to do generally when you think about sort of many of the drivers around the, the, the breathless hype that we have about uh, digital transformation, many of those drivers have to do with people wanting to do things faster. They want to deliver products and services faster. They want to provide better user experiences to their customers, and they want to achieve amazing business results. In other words, what every chief executive wants is tomorrow's revenue with yesterday's expenses. And as you can imagine, in this day and age with the pandemic, nobody is on the same operating plan that they were at the beginning of this year. Whatever they're doing, it is somewhat different than what they started, started the year with. And a lot of the challenges behind getting something that we think should be, you know, it should be a real, real layup, as we say in the United States, or we should have it sorted, as they say in England, uh, and the, the real challenges behind this are to some extent, you know, worrisome and to a large degree universal across the United States and the United Kingdom. So we did a survey with Vance and Bourne to reach out to 500 IT decision makers. And these 500 decision makers came back with some information that to us was a startling for the state of the union in 2020 and B showed where some of the reasons why a digital transformation is so hard to do and pointed out to some of the opportunities to go fix those things and in fact perform those outcomes that everybody wants to see across every corner of the globe and every vertical industry. So the 500 people who were polled, 83% are not satisfied with the state of data warehousing and the performance and output of the data warehousing today. Even worse, 89% of IT decision makers are worried that data silos are holding them back. And in fact, this seems to be the main stumbling block to moving data around, to orchestrating things and getting those business outcomes that we so want to have and shouldn't we be able to have them in the year 2020. You know, the cloud, to some extent, has been a wonderful thing, but it also has created some un unintended consequences of creating a lot of business silos. The cloud, on the one hand, has given us the ability to create capabilities. You know, we don't have to go out and buy servers and God, you know, heaven forbid, air conditioning and all those kind of things to set up a new capability to manage a customer, to bring on email, to be able to serve a customer better through customer service, et cetera, we can set up these capabilities in much the same way that we can consumer capabilities. Um, and, and that has been a good thing, but at the same time, massive amounts of cloud and SaaS applications have come into the enterprise on top of what already existed in times prior. And that combination is creating silos, is creating just this new kind of mess, if you would. You know, on the average, 
companies have about 115 applications, according to some of the research that we've commissioned. But bigger ones have more, 400, 500 applications are not uncommon. And these days, SaaS apps, websites, as a business user might call them, are not just limited to the IT department or the finance department, they're also in the marketing department. They're also in customer service, customer success, and all across the company, all the way to manufacturing with the internet of things. And, and this is, this siloing of business in an unintended consequence is to our minds a very large problem. We think there needs to be a new way of looking at the problem from above. Uh, the image that you have uh, in front of you is of the Thames flood control barrier, uh, a feat of engineering, uh, a combination of physics and you know, metrology and other kinds of things that have been put together. But to our mind, a powerful graphic that we can, if we harness our thinking and go about it the right way, we can control these things. You know, I have so many fond memories of London, one of which, as I look at this, is also of taking a cab ride. And it was very slow in the cab. And the cabbie turned around and said to me, did you know that the traffic in London is the same speed today, about 20 miles an hour, as it was in Victorian times? And it stands to reason. So, so, so it's true that all these cars are causing slow traffic in London. And all those silos in the enterprise are causing jams and are creating an inability to orchestrate data, to orchestrate services, to achieve the kind of business outcomes that we'd like to see. And we feel that there are a number of attributes that you should demand in today's modern data platform and you should be able to get them. You know, this will build out, but let me talk about them each to each and share our thoughts about this with you. We feel that enterprises need to embrace the cloud. We don't live in an age where we worry about the actual physics of our cars. You don't have to be a mechanic to drive a car. You don't have to be uh, an aircraft engineer to be a pilot. Today, unfortunately, the state of data is very much tied to the physical attributes of the underlying platform. We need to get out of the Hadoop zoo. We need to get out of the worries about this format, Parquet or that format. We need to get out of edge nodes and those kind of processing. We need to move towards the cloud and get away from the physical attributes. I think that has been a big issue in how people have traditionally thought about big data in particular. We need to go beyond batch. You know, it's not just ETL anymore, very truly, it's a combination of ELT, but not just that, there's many modalities. You can move things in real time through an API call. You can move things in batch. There's certain data that batch is perfectly well suited for. Financial data in particular seems to be fine. The reporting cycles are not instant, uh, but customer information, uh, the kind of things that people are doing on your website, you wanna have that happen in real time API calls. And now event streaming. With, with new technologies like Pulsar and Kafka and others that connect these things together, we need to go beyond batch for sure. We need to think about data science as a first class customer of ours. We need to think about an algorithm being as important a consumer of data as a analyst might have been in the last decade. It's not just about reporting, it's about algorithms, giving them data, data sets with which to feed the magic of data, working on data and new kinds of capabilities that can't be created in any other way. We need to think hard about deploying domain models. We need to think about the same kind of domains, whether we come into it from the production of data side or the consumption of data side, we need to think about domains like what is the underlying customer definition? What is the underlying uh, data structure for a employee? What is the underlying data structure for a partner? So we need to think of these domains and try to unify as best as we can the domains and use one end or the other to try to push them together. Speaking of pushing, the modern data platform cannot succeed on its own. It needs to push its neighbors, application developers around the domain idea, APIs and services, to share models and to think about a modern data platform as a first class citizen when they think about building a new application. 
in much the same way as almost anything that you have that is manufactured, you might be looking at this on a computer. Guess what? The design of computers has changed radically because design now has to cater to assembly that is done with automation with robots. So industrial design, manufacturing has all had to change. In that same way, the modern data platform has to change and it has to push all the cons constituents around it to think about the modern data platform as a first class citizen, as a partner at the table. We need to employ a federated approach. You know, you can't, if you just have a centralized approach, then you get a backlash. The business users are held back. You don't get results. If you try to get too much into people do their own thing, you get sprawl. You get, again, in these days of heightened awareness of data privacy, uh, data security, um, governance and compliance, we simply can't have sort of an ad hoc world where people can go out and you know, engage with data. So a federated approach where there is a, a way to have somebody authorize it, where people can move very quickly, but there are checks and balances in place in which some of the models, in which some of the domains, in which some of the um, stewardship is jointly managed between business and IT is very, very important. And last and perhaps most important, we need to think of self-service. A millennial is a computer savvy person. These are not people who are new to computers. These are not Luddites. You know, the, they were born in the age of the iPhone. Uh, and these are very capable people. They're conversant. They are able to engage with technology. And we need to allow them to, through automation, through self-service, we need to cater to multiple personas. This has to go beyond IT. This has to even go beyond shadow IT or line of business IT. This has to go towards self-service, again, with checks and balances and ways in which we can make that happen. And, and we feel, and perhaps this is, uh, this is my wrap up here, is so what is a modern data platform? A modern data platform is something that brings back the simplicity of what we knew at the dawn of data warehousing, where we had an organizing principle around which to manage data. We need to bring that simplicity back and get away from the physical complexity. You know, nobody buys a data warehouse. You assemble one. Well, you can build one from scratch in much the way you can build furniture or something, but there's not a modern data platform for an organization that you can write a check and buy. You assemble a modern data platform using the best practices and technologies that are available to you at that time. But in doing that, we have to be mindful of my favorite Steve Jobs quote, and that one that we have on the engineering wall in our company. Steve Jobs famously said, simple is hard, complex is easy. And you know, Apple's might in the technology universe, the capitalization is a testament to how they have simplified the way in which we interact with devices all the way from Macs to iPhones and other kinds of things. And you know, I would be remiss if I didn't point out to this week's Snowflake IPO and what a wonderful job they've done in simplifying cloud data warehousing and look at the reception and results they have achieved. So it's not just the apples of the world, but in our data business, there is also this move towards the cloud and simplicity that is very clearly paying off in revenue growth and therefore capitalization. So I believe a modern data platform is one that can adapt to changing requirements. It is more dynamic because of the self-service nature of it, and it can support changing models. Who could have thought that we'd be in a pandemic in January of this year? Whenever a fiscal year or calendar year began, we are certainly at a different place today. And any data model, any modern, any platform that cannot adapt is not gonna provide anywhere near the value that people are looking for. And you know, as I wrap up, I would say to you, we need to move past the three Vs, the volume, velocity, variety, those kind of physical attributes. And we need to move into what we call the four Aces, the four A's. Artificial intelligence, it is a disruptor and a game changer. We have to think of AI first. We have to bring applications into our embrace. We have to have access for anyone. This is about democratization. This is about Martin Luther for data. You don't need a high priest to read a Bible. Uh, data Bible, you should be able to do that on your own. And it's by using platforms that have a high degree of automation. It's, it's time that the platforms themselves use the data at metadata level of their customers' engagement to do a better job, to provide a virtuous cycle of better platforms by being able to observe some of the metadata around how people are engaging with them. And I'm confident that as we do that, we'll be able to achieve what we all look for from modern data platform 
and, uh, and that is very much something that is in our grasp if we change our point of view and our thinking. As I wrap up, I want to uh, shout out to some people that you may have heard of, some not. You know, in the very early days, uh, Inman and Kimball came up with some wonderful ideas. James Dixon did such a great job of data lakes. People at Snowflake and Redshift have done a wonderful job of providing technology. We work well with BWC and the Microsoft Azure team. And I think the uh, consulting folks at ThoughtWorks have done a very good job of thinking about data mesh and other kinds of ways in which we can put these things together. So my thanks to them and also my pointer to you to be able to, uh, to, be able to go out and do further research and work on this as needed. Um, so with that, I feel our talk has come to a wrap and I want to thank you and wish you all the best in your journey to building a modern data platform. We certainly can. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.